So I made this isometric room from scratch in Blender, and today I'm going to show you 10 tips so you can make isometric rooms fast that still look good. Just a little disclaimer before we jump into it, I'm not a Blender expert by any means. These are just some tips that I found helpful when making this. So let's jump right into it. Right, let's be honest, deleting the default cube is the most important thing to do in Blender. So let's just totally obliterate it. Then after we have done that, let's press Shift A and add a cube. Bruh. And then at this point, you probably wanna set up the camera. The default starting position of Blender's camera is actually pretty good for an isometric room, but you can see it's not giving that isometric sort of look. So if we go over to the camera properties and to the type, we can change it from perspective to orthographic. You can see that instantly changes the type of look. Now you can't tell the difference between things that are further away or closer. You can see if I change between the two. And then I also like to make the camera square. So make the resolution 1080 by 1080 and scale the cube up by two and you have a good starting point. Now, if we tab into edit mode and go to face select mode, we can select these three faces then press X, delete the faces, and then we can press A to select all the faces, press Alt E and extrude faces along normals, then extrude that out a bit and press S to make it even. Something like that is fine. Then you can tab out of edit mode and just add a bit of bevel. And then that's your room set up. So the objects in this room are made mostly of simple shapes. You can easily break down any of these objects into one of Blender's default shapes. You can see the bed is just a cube, the desk is another cube, the pencil holder is just a cylinder with a hole in it, candles are also cylinders, the books are just a cube with a bevel on the end and a hole in the middle, and then again the shelves are just big cubes. So keep your shapes simple if you can, it makes everything way faster to model but it still looks really good in the end, just don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Clean geometry always looks good. So for this render, I was going for a cozy sort of style. And if you want that cozy style, you want to have lots of round corners and edges. So here the bevel modifier was so helpful just to add a nice bevel to basically every single object. You can even use the bevel modifier a small amount just to round off those hard edges. It makes a huge difference, especially up close. You don't always need to bevel stuff, like if you're going for a low poly style, you wouldn't need to bevel it at all, but most of the time a bevel modifier here and there can make things look way better. Curves are also super helpful. I actually used a curve for this chair. I got inspiration from this from an older Blender splash screen, and then you can just use a curve and basically trace out the path you want with a bit of extrusion on it. It's the same thing with this neon flame on the wall I made. It's all curves. Curves are also really great for things like fairy lights, cords and cables, and just anything with a more cylindrical flow. And they're non-destructive, so you can just adjust them any time without starting over. So with the floorboards, I wanted to have them expand across the whole floor. And in this situation, I could duplicate it and then copy that a bunch of times it fills the whole floor but then i would have a lot of separate meshes which is kind of annoying to work with so the easier way and the non-destructive way to do that is just add a array modifier and then you can adjust the factor and the count and all that sort of stuff and then of course if you don't want it you can just remove it and it's super simple same thing for this bed post i could have just duplicated this post over to the other side and then did the same with this top object it's not totally even, and I also now have more objects on my hand. So I used a mirror modifier instead, and then I just set this bed frame as the mirror object, and then it's mirrored over non-destructively, which is super helpful and saves a lot of resources and objects. So if you're ever duplicating something over to another side or you want to have a bunch of those same objects in a row, just remember you can always use modifiers which are non-destructive and save a bunch of time and objects. So color is like the main thing. So color is like the main thing that brings this whole scene to life. And you don't normally want to just go around placing random colors on random objects. With this scene, I was trying to make it look pretty cozy, so I stuck with more pale colors, and I used a lot of brownish colors. You see, I used brown for the main room, brown for the walls, brown for the floorboards, 
a lot of pale wood and then I did use the occasional few pale colors as well. There's also a bunch of online color palette generators which are also super helpful but it always depends on your scene but the one thing I'd recommend is sticking to a color palette or a nice set of colors that you like. Don't just go around adding random colors here and there. So this is where you can really set the atmosphere of this scene. You can tell the person who lives in this room is pretty neat and tidy and obviously likes cats. Bruh. This stage is also one of my favorites where you can personalize and add a sort of story to your scene. By the way, a little Easter egg here. And some of you might know that this post is actually from a game. <laughs> This tip is also pretty important. You don't just want to add a bunch of objects that really have no point in being here or make any sense, but you also don't want your scene to be fully empty. So you need to kind of find a nice balance between having a good amount of objects that kind of tell a rough story and not having too many objects that clutter your scene up. So I try to leave a bit of breathing room where it makes sense and only add new elements if they serve the sort of feel or the story. Less can absolutely be more. And then we have the last tip, which is lighting. And I'm actually not a big fan of lighting, but I was pretty happy with how this one turned out. And if I turn my lights collection on, you can see I actually have quite a few lights here. So if I hide my light collection, you can see it's very dark and it doesn't really fit the sort of feel that I was going for. The only main sources I have here at the moment is this um, neon glowing sign and the window. If I hide that and then hide the wall sign, you can see it's completely dark other than the candles. So let's break down some of the lights I added. This one up the top here was a pretty weak one. It was only at a power of 50%. But it does add a little bit more of a highlight along the wall here and on the floor here. And then the next light is on the opposite side, casting a bit of light on the opposite wall and on the bed. And this one is even weaker. It's only at 25 watts. And then here's the main light, which is set to about 60, and it's just kind of filling the whole scene. Then we have another 50 watt one pointing at this wall at the back, just to give it a bit more life. And then we have one from the top, which makes a massive difference, set to 200. That really fills all the shadows out and makes it a bit less harsh. And then I wanted the bottom here to be a little bit brighter, so I added one more shining up from the bottom, also at 200. And then when you add in the neon sign and the window, it really brings everything to life. You might have noticed that all my lights have a sort of beige color on them, because I was going for that cozy sort of vibe. Obviously, if you're going for a nighttime scene, you'd have the power way less and maybe have a light blue color. So my main lighting tip here is just play around with it. And you normally want one main light pointing at the whole scene. And then you can have a bunch of secondary ones highlighting other sections of the scene that you want. So yeah, that's how I made this isometric room in Blender. Yeah, so once you get the hang of making these sort of things, it becomes really fun. And if you want to see a time lapse or tutorial, maybe drop a like on this video. Hopefully you found something helpful in this video. And if you did, maybe subscribe. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.